Okay. Hi, hello, and uh, welcome uh, to another episode of the Join John series, uh, where we'll be interacting with a host of industry experts. I'm John Vincent, your co-founder from Niche Brains and the host for the series. Uh, just a quick brief about Niche Brains. Niche Brains is a digital transformation platform which connects millions of SMEs with the best of brains across the globe to adopt digital transformation to help them grow their business exponentially, thus democratizing digital transformation. Uh, firstly, a very, very happy new year to you all. So hope this year uh, is an excellent and progressive year for all of us. So in today's session, um, uh, we have a very seasoned guest, uh, Chirag Vati. So Chirag is currently the, uh, the chief product officer of Lucknow's Farmers Market. So he's received his master's of training from the University of Illinois, Chicago, and he's done his executive management from Cornell University. Uh, his other alumni, Stanford, uh, ULCA, ULC, UC Berkeley, and UC San Diego. He has consulted for many conglomerates like Aditya Birla Group, Tara Sons, Reliance, Vogdo Janyub, and many others. He has been in India. He's also in many companies around the globe. So welcome to today's episode, Chirag. Great to have you interact with us today. Thank you, John. And uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you so much, John, for having us. Well, so so Chirag, it'll be great if you can uh, start off with a quick, uh, you know, brief introduction about yourself, and then we can get on with the session. Oh, um, I think you introduced very well, but uh, yeah, thanks. I am an engineer at heart by training, Bombay, bought, uh, born and brought up in Bombay, but all my education somehow has uh, been in the U.S. and uh, have had a chance to work with multiple uh, on multiple projects, multiple uh, geographies over the years, and. Um, last few years, what I have seen with India is India has seen an exponential growth. Exponential is in like single digits, double digits. It's hard to peg points because everybody has a different statistics in mind. But it depends on how you look at it. India has been on a growth trajectory for the last few years. And uh, recently, the World Economic Forum that was in Davos uh, last week, you must have seen a lot of people talking yep. about the next decade, which is going to be India's decade. I firmly believe uh, that we have a lot to achieve and we are very lucky to be part of this journey. Wonderful, wonderful, Chirag. Good to hear from that. So just moving on to you know today's uh, session, uh, Chirag. So uh, see, we, we, we talk about quite a lot of about this COVID and this is right. So, what impact are we actually talking about, and what should be the focuses uh, focus for the businesses? Um, we are in a different state of mind. When in 2020 we got hit by the COVID uh, uh, 20, COVID 19 wave in the first when the lockdown started, we did not know what to expect, how to react. So we were all scared as such. Then the if you understand the cycle, got reversed in six months and people became too casual and then we got hit by a second or the second wave which was yep. more devastating than the first and we lost a lot of good people uh we had a lot of loss of uh, revenue loss of uh, business uh it's been two years three years now but today when china talks about a new occurrence of covid virus amongst their midst and a lot of people getting affected dying and of course, that virus is going to get spread across the globe because now there are no flight restrictions. There are people still traveling out of China, coming to India, going to Europe, and so on. So, so people are going to bring that virus along with them. So if the virus exists into a uh, airborne state, then we definitely are going to get it. Uh, but now we have a different mindset. We are not scared of because we know what to do with it we know what to, how to handle it the issue is about what impact it is going to cause on our livelihood more like rather than a health to handle it because right now we have enough supply of oxygen we have enough medication all those things we have stockpiled it it's not about the healthcare anymore it is about the business care that means, right. do you have the money to survive through the uh, uh, hospital bills and the doctor bills and the, um, because most of the people today or back in the day couldn't afford the ho hospital healthcare or even went bankrupt. 
So today, how do you protect yourself from economical economical uh, recession? And of course, as you can see in the US and the Europe, we are talking about a different type of recession because of the Ukraine war. So right. now, how do we handle these two scenarios at the same time? Uh, in my opinion, we get uh, hammered by these kind of uh, second occurrence of COVID if that happens, um, as, as in pandemic, we will get hit from a three plus three pronged perspective. One is, do we have enough material uh, in the country or do we have enough inventory to sustain ourselves? Because the first thing that any geography would do is seal their border to hit the pandemic. And if you remember, that, that's the first thing that we did. We went into a lockdown. Right. Lockdown means nothing going out, nothing coming in. You are frozen wherever you are. The major issue was about how do we control your essential goods going in and out or the goods that are required, raw material to produce those essential things. Now, if you see the charts today, a lot of people who thought in the when the pandemic was starting that how would the automobile sector do? How would the automobile sector react? Because automobile is not a necessity, it's a luxury, right? If you think about cars and um, other other uh, nature. So it's, but to, to everybody's astonishment, automobile sector today and during the COVID as well, did phenomenally well. Okay. The reason was that people were no longer taking chances by sharing public spaces in public transports. So people were people who could afford were uh, were going in trains or cars, uh, sorry buses, and they stopped it. Yep. They would like their own cars or own auto automobile. So now you they went on to get a different individual automobile that ramped up the uh, demand for homegrown Indian grown Tata Motors or Mahindra and Mahindra uh, Jeeps or cars or SUVs that they are producing. Right. The problem that we face today. If that happens, so uh, Tata Motors and Mahindra Mahindra are very well their products, but we are still dependent on electronics from China. Right. So what what would you how would you face that if you don't get electronic parts from the Chinese uh, producers, which are either the raw material or the chips or the PCB boards? How are we going to manufacture the car? So today, if you there is a new car that has come up a few years back, which is the XUV 700 from Mahindra and Mahindra. And if you think if you try to book that today, it is the waiting period is about 12 months. Now, when you think about a car, you want it today, right? You don't want it after a year. It's not a house. It's a car. So but why is there a 12 month waiting period? Is it the Mahindra Mahindras can't produce the car fast enough? It's not that the problem is about the motherboard and the central computing system that is on board for the XCB 700. Mahindras are not getting that enough from the Chinese manufacturers. And that dependency is going to hamper us. And that is, this is just an example from an automobile sector. I'm, I, we can relate that example to raw materials for chemicals, raw material for rare earth metals, um, TV screen. Most industries, industries, right? Absolutely. So um, I think, a three pronged uh, effect uh, in things that will get affected. One is the logistics, like how is it going to, uh, how are we going to get material on time? How are we going to get it? Um, and so and so. Second is the inventory. How are we going to manage it? So are we going to stockpile our inventory or are we going to uh, rely out of China? Maybe we rely on Indonesia, maybe we rely on Brazil or maybe we rely on African countries. So that is something that a decision that an Indian companies have to take. And that's not an easy decision. As you can understand, John, it's a very big decision for a company. Right. And then uh, the third part is about marketing. If, you, if you're not marketing and if you're relying on a local market, if you, if your pandemic in, if the pandemic gets market is frozen. So how do you reach out to a non-local market sitting at in your headquarters or in your office? So that is something that people still don't understand that you need to have multiple channels of marketing and not only right. sourcing or not only selling it locally or regionally, but also selling it nationally or globally. Right. Very good. 
So so Chirag, uh, you know, you you touch base. You know, I'm just uh, you know primarily focusing towards the the marketing because you know you're from the uh, marketing side. You know, you're an expert on that side. So let me a little bit touch base on that uh, focus uh, primarily on the digital marketing side. See, especially when we you know we look at the businesses, you know how they are uh, structured around. You know, we we can segregate them as three kinds of uh, businesses, right? The businesses which have an idea about uh, digital marketing and then you know who have done some form of digital marketing probably they have a website or basic online presence right and then we have some uh, businesses which have good online uh, presence probably they are into some little bit of marketing they have done some e-commerce too so how do, how do you think that you know each of these businesses uh, can build upon uh, or use the digital marketing you know to further enhance their business so john you rightly said uh, i would break this question into two frames one is a uh, leader uh, early adapter as such yeah. and a lagging adapter like every, everybody if you know in your friend circle as well once the new iphone comes in there are some people who would run to buy it and there are some people who would wait for a year because either the prices are too high or i want to see what are the new features and then then buy very people who run to buy it are called early adapters and then we will we of course know the lagging uh, people who buy it after a year are the la lagging indicators right. now the thing is with the early adapters primarily really, these are some industries which need digital marketing i mean not survive without advertising without digital marketing without their marketing uh, effort being the core of the business like if you th these are certain industries like fmcg if you think about the biscuits that you buy or the juices that you uh, buy or some food material that you buy are mainly to do with the marketing piece of it either your kids or your parents or your spouse is telling you go buy this thing it really looks nice right so that that's the fmcg part then comes your retails, which is the clothing fashion industry. The fashion industry, of course, goes through a trend. So either they sell it now or they don't sell it. And so when if they don't sell it, their whole inventory goes for a toss. So they need these kind of things. Uh, there are other industries which are uh, more uh, proactive in the sense that people, uh, industries that depend on technology like AI, or ML, uh, machine learning, or data mining. These technologies, like for example, if you think about Google Maps, Google Maps relies a lot on uh, user-based data, uh, artificial intelligence to route mapping, a satellite uh, uh, fencing, geofencing, and all those things. Now, these technologies have to be adapted sooner. So it depends on which industry you're in, but you definitely need digital marketing in the sense to either catch the market today that you have available. Think about who is your customer today. The customer either comes through a local regional setup or it comes through online, right? But today locally, how far are you ready to travel? Like if you must have seen uh, cities like Gurga, sorry, New Delhi with their NCR region, suburbs or Bangalore with its uh, new coming suburbs or Hyderabad for its uh, uh, new uh, ring road uh, setup. How far are you to travel for a certain material to buy? And the answer is not much. You're not today, you're not ready to travel for uh, 40 kilometers to buy something. You want it either in a catchment area of eight. If that's there, then you would visit the shop, get that purchase done. Otherwise, you are just going to go online and purchase it. So Today, online is making a big impact. Uh, you Any business, it could be B2B or B2B, has to have an online presence. The online presence doesn't stop there. Online, you need a facility or a platform to make that transaction happen. Because if you want to buy something, you need the facility to put it in the cart and pay for it. Right. So you can't rely. Today, a lot of businesses that I understand uh, who don't have the website, who don't have anything of digital uh, marketing uh, in on elements which are traditionally being present, traditional distributorship, traditional supply chain, or traditional ch channel of marketing. But with pandemic, what we have seen is that is all being broken. 
people don't want intermediate distributors they want direct uh, di uh, direct decision makers direct manufacturers so that is right. why there is a concept of d2c which is direct to consumer right rather than we we call b2b b2c we have now uh, come up with a new concept for d2c and that is what manufacturers also would like to do manufacturers would like to sell directly to consumers because they can make a relationship they can have a brand royalty in, a loyalty in place so both sides get benefited and the person who gets eliminated in between is the distributor or the middleman so our businesses have to people who don't have uh, these kind of infrastructure available on a priority priority level i think they need to set up and in basic infrastructure at least a website a transactional platform a place where they can package it and ship it now today we have shippers like picker uh, delivery um, the uh, express bees and all those the uh, logistical uh, partners who can who will just pick it up from your uh, place of uh, sourcing and deliver it to the consumer so yeah. today it's easier uh, than it was before but the basic uh, individual who does uh, the individual, the business does not have basic needs they need to create a basic infrastructure in place oh. and creating a basic infrastructure is not it's pretty easy today and i'm sure totally to get them connected with the people who are um, experts in this area then uh, john i think you are uh, the second point of your question was there is an intermediate level where people are there are businesses which are equipped with some level of digital marketing right. but which would like to go to a new level Correct. so those are the businesses who uh, need to get uh, an understanding of how to use their infrastructure now when if you build the infrastructure you have kept it in the place but you yeah. need an understanding on how to use it and uh, monetize it because at the end of the day cash is god right, right? you need right. that uh, money flowing in you need that uh, new channel helping your current revenue stream and enhance, and uh, enhancing your balance sheet so today we have our sit in who sit in india can sell their material worldwide if you if you have a good material if you have the good material if you have the quality and the usp that you're producing it could be if you could be a regional player but sell nationally and that is completely all right and that can be done through multiple channels like you could do uh, google adwords you could do marketing and this is pretty easy today these platforms have made it so easy that a graduate of any stream could be commerce arts or um, core sciences can just log in and get it done but if again if that's not possible then uh, i believe niche brains is completely equipped with it so having the mon have monetization to be done with the current infrastructure uh, is a leap where revenue will be augmented with your new uh, stream this this is done through mobile applications this is done through uh, in uh, a retargeting concept which i would like to emphasize is nowadays is the concept of remarketing and retargeting that means if you are looking if if you're looking at uh, a product to be bought uh, you will see some ads for the next 24 hours related to that product you right. okay because uh, google tracks your tracks your type uh, uh, what you're searching for and according to those searches google is going to show you a particular set of ads and marketers can take advantage of it and start doing retargeting because your audience is the right set of audience that you're marketing it to and the decision that will happen would be faster than marketing trying to convince somebody else to do that uh, to do that action right. so that is the second type of people the third type of people are who are into a stage of who are already doing digital marketing and who now want to look at how to optimize their function so right. if if you think about um if you think about uh, nika who who does cosmetics not great online interface as well that means has a online selling uh, channel 
Nike is not worried about infrastructure because they already have the infrastructure. They have somebody or some agency handling their online marketing. What they need to look at now is how to penetrate larger in the market space. So if you if their India is their market right. space, how do you penetrate to every household, to every female or every individual? How do you have uh, a man, male, walk into Nike, hop online into Nike's platform or his wife or his girlfriend or his mother? Right. Now that is type of penetration Nike would like because if you have a man shop for a cosmetic on their platform, that means they have created a brand uh, not only in the mindset of a female audience, but also in a male audience. Right. Now, how do you do that? So there we come uh, come up with a concept about brand recall. How far? How is your brand recall happening? What kind of penetration, mindset penetration do you have? And that is mainly to do with um, what is your content marketing strategy? What is your um, hooks? Why would anyone come to you versus going to your uh, competitor? Right. Now, this kind of optimization is done through ad optimization, done through content. And there are multiple, uh, RT, I would not say AI type of thing, but I would say there are a lot of smart technology that you can use to do these kind of uh, data optimization. Now, I am sure, John, uh, if I get into technicalities, everyone in the yeah. audience will understand it. So I'll leave it to uh, leave it at this point. And if anyone is interested, they can get in touch with us again, right? Sure, sure. Absolutely. Uh, so on that same thing, Chirag, uh, you know, if you can, uh, for the audience purpose, can you give us any typical case study uh, which you have done for any type of business, probably wherein, you know, you've, uh, you know, for, for any type of uh, business that we discussed right now, you know, how the digital marketing, you know, was used and, and how the business basically improved? I, I would tell you this way that um, uh, there is a, th there are two businesses that I worked with, uh, which which I think uh, suit this question. First is um, it's a Bombay based clamp manufacturers. It's a metal clamp. If you're uh, putting two pipes together and there right. is a yeah. gaseous liquid that uh, flows to the pipe, that you can't weld it because the welding is going to break and and there would be an explosion if it's if there is high pressure available. So right. what you do, basically, you put those pipes together and you have a clamp on it. There are different clamps from small to medium to large. And uh, these clamps are made by certain steel, grade of steel. They are very precision uh, items. Manufacturers, uh, so this company was one of the India's leading clamp manufacturers. They right. had the aftermarket in their hands and they had the um, OEMs in their hands, like almost there. But they were in India, local means like, I wouldn't say local, but national level. Now, this company wanted to uh, uh, see if they want, they could get the same kind of attention in US and the Europe and the Australian markets. Now, sitting in India, having no office at all, no presence in right. those countries, you, it's difficult to convince anybody. Yep. So what, they started, what they started doing is they um, had a digital marketing um, avenue explored where they created an infrastructure that would resemble their brand and would be easily accessible from anywhere in the world. And then they started do, uh, you know, getting in touch with or targeting the automobile sector in the US, in Europe, Canada, and Australia. Automobile sector, there is a lot of wear and tear of these clamps because your car is going to go to garage, your car is going to get scrapped after some years. So there is a wear and tear. Right. So OEMs need it, aftermarket needs it. Today, I can tell you, because of using uh, digital marketing avenues, targeting these uh, companies through LinkedIn, Sales Navigator, through, through Google, through Facebook and Instagram's uh, ad campaign, Today, the revenue has gone from 100 crores to 225 crores. Beautiful. Automatically, their export revenue is exceeding their national distribution revenue. Okay. So if they had they had if they decided to stay in India alone, they would have still made about 120, 150 crores. Right. But because they explored an international market through digital marketing channels, they could directly shoot 
double or more than double of their um, uh, revenue right. now that's one that's the metal uh, industry and and automobile industry so i'll give you an example of a chemical industry uh, so this is the um, there is a uh, there was a company in chennai who did uh, who imported as well as created their own uh, chemicals now chemical industry as you can understand is very regulated because you can create potassium cyanide you can create tnt you can create uh, so if you don't know what tnt is it's basically a bomb right so you can create bombs you can do uh, explosives you can cre create poisons out of uh, chemicals so the government of india or any government any country has high regulations on what chemicals can be produced or transacted chemical right. industry traditionally if you've seen when we were in colleges and we were in schools were mainly to do with brick and mortar shops where people would go and buy things declare give their id make sure that they track who is buying it okay but today every laboratories across iits laboratories across universities there are these scientists and the students who don't believe in brick and mortar stores right so they would like everything to be ordered and delivered at their foot, uh, footsteps right now in that, that case this company decided to take advantage of that trend few years back pre covid and decided to create a marketplace in right. the marketplace you had these all these chemicals which are in non regulated which were regulated and semi regulated so right. today the technology is there to take pan cards aadhar cards declarations everything online so whatever uh, the regulations or kyc had to be done they would still be able to do it online so during covid because there were so many chemical demands so there was a le level of demand for the chemicals had gone way high because you had hand sanitizers which required uh, chemicals you needed uh, cleaning supplies which needed chemicals you needed different different type of uh, sanitary sorry sanitization products across the uh, hospitals or across the healthcare industry which needed uh, chemicals across not not to for, uh, forget the pharmaceutical companies the pharmaceutical companies needed chemicals to produce uh, medicines so right. this, this platform and because of that niche availability now this is this is not something international i don't have a uh, this case study doesn't have the international uh, glance to it but what it means is if your market is nascent or if there is a gap in the market and right. you can you, you see that gap if you are able to fill that gap you will be the pioneer in the industry so these two case studies tell you that if you want to go international digital marketing can do wonders if you still want to stay national but want to tap a niche market digital marketing can do wonders that's what i want to wonderful so chuchra uh, you know i think you know you've given us a good overview with respect to the digital marketing for the different businesses you know how they can do and also with your couple of case studies as to how uh, you know an uh, you know how a company can go international and make money as well as through digital marketing how they can expand their business locally as well so is there some key takeaways that you can give us you know for you know SMEs can reflect back and you know they can immediately look at you know how they should probably uh, you know start their digital marketing or you know advance their digital marketing journey so what i would say uh, john is first of all there needs to be an understanding for a business on which level they are on either right. they are on level 1 level 2 level 3 right. um, if you don't have the right infrastructure getting the right uh, right infrastructure is very important and infrastructure is pretty cheap today it's very easily available um, uh, and and that is never a challenge in india because we are an it strong company, country then right. there is uh, level 2 level 2 people have to understand that what kind of uh, what kind of infrastructure they are utilizing or what level of utilization is there in their current infrastructure is the utilization optimized or if they need to um, uh, repair certain aspects in their process right the third level of uh, level 3 people are basically how do, today if you're making x revenue out of their current infrastructure and channel then how do you take that x revenue to 2x or 3x right so always uh optimizing because we are a large country we, there is a lot of demand there is never an issue about do we uh, are there buyers to for my product there is always somebody to buy the product 
but are we reaching to the right audience is the question so um, once you once you reach there um, i think businesses can realize um, what kind of um, rev, you know potential revenue they can make uh, that's the right way to do it john there is no second second thought to it absolutely so you know i, I think uh, you know it's it's pretty much insightful in whatever you have given today charag so so when i look at it from the three categories the first category there's there's no looking back that you know with uh, pandemics and these kind of uh, uh, natural uh, uh, you know disasters or whatever that is going to strike we need to be ready and digital marketing is one of the key channels and whether it is as uh, you know whether you fall in the any level so marketing is a very very key aspect and if you are probably in the second level you have to look at how you can expand your business uh, probably look at you know how you can optimize more of your digital marketing and with respect to the third level you would want to see um, how you can probably uh, increase your revenue multifold your revenue with the current infrastructure and if it's needed add some more part to that so you know, i think it's been pretty insightful Yachirak. so with that um, you know we can open it up for the audience question so if there are some questions from the audience you know sure Chirag would be happy to answer them as well thank you john Hirag, this is Lakshmi here. Uh, let me just ask you one question. I think um, it was a very insightful session for sure and uh, quite a good takeaways. Uh, see, you have worked in uh, very large conglomerates like Aditya Birla and others, and also you also work with SMEs. Typically, yes, I know, while uh, I know the large organization has uh, quite a good infrastructure, be it with people, be it with you know, financial you know, support, and also you know, kind of an infrastructure, whereas SMEs, this is at a high level, I'm saying. Uh, luxury as such, I would say that. But having said that, both needs this new channel avenue for you know, reaching out to their prospective customers. In your experience, can you share mainly from an SME point of view, when you compare this with having worked with uh, you know, conglomerates, what uh, differentiation, both positive, you know, what do, where do you see that things are positive and where do you see the challenges which SMEs possibly, when they are able to reframe it, they will be having much more successful. Would you be able to give some uh, insights onto that, uh, Chirag. Sure. So good. I mean, I, I think uh, me, this is a uh, really pinpointed question, and I think everybody uh, needs to know uh, what is the differentiating factor between a conglomerate and a um, SME. Uh, so I'll I'll take take it into um, uh, from a corporate side first, from a conglomerate. The corporates have uh, larger budgets. I agree. Um, they have more manpower, they have more sustaining capacity in the sense from a money side that today if they don't make enough money through online or digital marketing, they are not going to go bankrupt. But there is challenge for them. The challenge is that because they are reputed, they have a brand in the market, their experimentation capacity is very low. They cannot think of an experiment going bad. Okay, because their reputation will go get tarnished. So every step that they take, they have to double check, triple check, quadruple check. And that takes a lot of turnaround time for them. And a lot of good ideas get thrown out just because of it goes, doesn't go through the checkpoints that they have. Second, what corporates have a limitation is they cannot try out a technology unless it is tried and tested in the market. Because if what if they, it fails? What if uh, what if this happens? What if that happens? So the what they do is they get somebody with very very high price tag to do a very small thing. That means if you uh, you must have uh, heard about people going to Taj Hotel in Bombay, uh, Taj Mahal Hotel to have a cup of tea. Now that cup of tea costs sixteen hundred rupees. Whereas a cup of tea out in a market in a really nice restaurant would still cost you 100 rupees. Now, 130, 1600, right? The difference is that you're trying to go to Taj for a brand sake of it. So if these companies have to transact or try to get somebody on board uh, to do a small thing, that comes with a very high price tag. So they bleed a lot in this kind of notions or if this kind of risk mitigation strategies. Plus they being such a big organizations, they can't move that fast. If they have to do an ad campaign, if they have to simply do a picture ad on Facebook, 
it go it takes at least 3 to 4 months for approval through chief marketing officer go through brand officer go through legal officers and all those things whereas now come to startups or smes smes are like if you, if you think corporates are like white elephants smes are like leopards you can move fast you can change directions you can experiment with things because since your footprint is not that large if you if the experiment goes bad you can say oops sorry i made a mistake and that brand is not going to get tarnished so much same as if you want to try out a technology or try out a single piece of uh, some tool you are not going to get some american organization all the way to india just to do it because you don't have you you think okay that's it's it's all right to have that 100 rupee chai why why have the 1600 rupee chai okay so the advantage is that in smes you are more agile you are more flexible you are more faster you can uh, do things that corporates cannot and today digital marketing the infrastructure the tools have become so cheap or i would say available to normal people that you don't need to be a corporate so if you think about 1980s if you had to create an tv ad you had to hire a agency with crores of rupees and only unilever and uh, uh, different brands like amul or dabar could afford those kind of ad campaigns but today you have you must have seen on tv you can have smes doing campaigns right so it's not that availability is a challenge is that the mindset or the doability that thinks uh, i mean the spirit to do it uh, is the limitation rest i think the playing field is now quite equal that's fantastic thanks a lot shirad sure i have one more question but i'll hold on if anybody has an other i'll just hold on I before asking that. i think i think we uh, uh, will will keep some time for everybody but if you have a question please go ahead yeah I, okay i like your quote on healthcare versus business care in the start because that's very important like you know where uh, where uh, it's important that we move from a healthcare and also the business care is a must one and the second one is also it's going to be you know, uh, india's decade when it comes to manufacturing as well. i just really you know associate these two uh, to a little bit you know uh, hear your thoughts uh, what is the role of smes in this india's decade and uh, how should they really you know with this pandemic of pandemic or recessions or anything how they should typically future proof because majority of you know small and medium enterprises anywhere between uh, 50 to 200 300 crores companies the the focus is mainly on uh, you know getting the day to day stuff and people are really focused on you know getting stuck on the day to day challenges and really not really expanding to the new uh, you know way of doing things for example digital marketing or positioning in them in the digital way so keeping those things in mind and the role of smes in the india's decade as well as you know how smes can insulate them or a future proof them from in terms of positioning uh, you know as they Go work towards this coming decade, uh, uh, Chirag. I know that it's a pretty long question, but uh, I think uh, I would leave it there uh, to you no know, chair to hear your perspectives. So, uh, Lakshmi, I think you have asked the right question in the sense that uh, India is on a cusp of uh, exponential growth. Th- that uh, companies. today up uh, upcoming companies small companies startup companies or smes are going to play a dis- decisive role in the growth because if you think about conglomerates conglomerates have reached to a point where they have 6% 8% 11% growth rate year on year but if you think about an sme sme today can easily have 35% 40% growth year on year and that is absolutely possible the government is supporting there are there is an environment uh, which is accepting risk taking organizations there are there is an environment where you can get funding there are banks who have opened up uh, regulations to give uh, non collateral or less collateral kind of a loans so there are uh, there is an environment of business that is in india what we need to understand is in my opinion there is a cloud of creating valuation versus creating value unless you create value your valuation is of no use it's like a balloon some day the valuation is going to pop and you are going to come down all the way down 
so creating value is should be the prime focus of an organization now how do you create value product quality product innovation product uniqueness focus on your product or the service that you're going giving then focus on the service usp and if that happens your marketing will augment your product uh, sale but as i as i keep giving examples to my students is you can go to a restaurant looking at its fancy nice boards out there nice ambience and you sit down and then you the food is not that great neither is the service what do you do you don't go back again right if you want to get your customer again and again back in you need to do your core business right so right. unless you create value your valuation is not no use lakshmi i think I, did yeah, i yeah excellent you? thanks a lot tachira appreciate uh, this question thank you thanks uh, do we have any further questions okay i think uh, uh, we're getting close to the time so i think we can uh, probably wind up i'm sure if there are further questions you can uh, you know definitely reach back to us so thanks a lot uh, chirag again for and i believe there's a quite a lot of uh, information that you've shared for the audience to take away today uh, someone would like to again you know get connected with chirag please to reach out to uh, support at the rate niche brains ai or you can reach out to me as well john dot vincent at the rate niche brains ai so thank you chirag once again for being with us today on this episode uh, it mm -hmm. was wonderful to have you thank you so much john the pleasure pleasure is all mine so thank you all again for joining us in the session today it was wonderful to have you all and hope to see you on the very next episode of uh, join john soon so this, bye for now and this is join signing off